Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, we're gonna go through my entire puzzle haul for October. And uh, gee, well, as you can see, it's a lot. I didn't think it would be this many, but uh, I guess, well, here we are. So get a drink, grab a nice snack, get comfy, and let's go through all these fun puzzles together. All right, so I've grouped all these puzzles um, based on like where they're from or where I purchased them from. Um, just like the last couple of puzzle hauls, I've decided to go through the Amazon haul first. I don't know why, just because it's usually the largest. So let's get that one done and out of the way first. Um, so um, I've got a few Buffalo Games ones, which isn't any surprise, I normally do. So the first one is, um, by Josie Lewis, the artist, and it's called Diamond Dahlia. And it's probably pretty easy to see why this one caught my eye. Um, yeah, it's just a really lovely sort of rainbow diamondy flower type pattern. Um, yeah, I've had my eye on some for a while, but it only became, I think, available recently. So I grabbed it, but I've got a few others. Um, also, I think, oh, 1000 piece and also 500 piece. Um, by her and they're all re re like really pretty and colorful um yeah so just thought this would be a really nice fun one to do a nice little quick puzzle to do as well so yeah i'm looking forward to that one um then this one is quite different it's quite dark compared to that one this one is the amazing nature series and it's called tiger and crocodile and it's 500 pieces as well and yeah so the artwork's a lot more dark and um I guess almost murky or grungy style than the previous one. Um, but yeah, it features like this sort of interesting illustration of this tiger and crocodile kind of hanging out in the jungle. I mean, who knows what they're up to? Probably scheming or something no good, but I don't know, it's just such a weird and unusual image, but something about it caught my eye, just like the style and um, yeah, it just looks interesting. Um, and I don't really own anything like that. So just thought that would be fun to do. Um, I must have been going through a tiger phase because I bought another tiger puzzle. This one makes maybe a little more sense because again, it's sort of a rainbow, colorful, bright puzzle. Um, but I just thought it was really uh, nice. Again, this is a 500 piece and oh, it's from the Amazing Nature series and it's called Stripes of Color. But yeah, just a very bold, striking tiger image. Um, yeah, I just thought that looked like it'd be fun to do as well. Um, not much else to say. Simple, bright, colorful. I like it. And then the last of the Buffalo Games ones is a bigger piece count, 750 pieces. And this one, surprisingly, it's not a tiger, it's not a rainbow, and it's not a cat. It's actually a dog, believe it or not. Shocking, I know. So this is from the series Dog Days, and this is called Westy Night. And um, this one just caught my eye because, well, I mean, one, the dog's very cute, um, but two, it's in sort of a, the style of Van Gogh. So it's this sort of swirly, painty patterns, and I guess it's sort of meant to be a bit remin reminiscent of like Starry Starry Night or something like that. But um, I really like the colors in it, like the sky is like, Got these bright swirls, but also lots of pinks in there. So it's not just blue and yellow like Starry Starry Night, but has sort of more sunset colors. And then, yeah, the sort of texture of the dog's fur looks really cool and flowers and grass at the bottom. So yeah, I just thought that one looked really, really fun and cute. Um, just a nice puzzle to do. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one, even if it's not a cat, so yeah. And then, Another puzzle I got from Amazon is by the brand Bedico, which I haven't actually tried before. Um, this puzzle is called Waiting for Our Humans and it's 1000 pieces. And yeah, it's basically um, got a cute dog, cat and a bird, which all look like they're falling asleep and being bored waiting for their humans to come home, which I think is pretty funny. Um, it's quite a duck. Well, I mean, it's got bright red, but it's sort of a very simplistic, fairly dark color scheme of like navy blues and like the bold red and other color, other types of blues in there. Um, and it actually kind of reminds me a bit of like a very 50s sort of style or shag the artist. Like it kind of reminds me a bit of that art style, but in this more sort of 
simplistic color scheme. Um, yeah, so I liked the imagery. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, so I've never done this any puzzles by this brand before, so I'm really interested to see what they're like because um, on Instagram they seem like they're very well liked and very popular. Um, but they're also a US brand, so it's I haven't had the chance up until now to like really get a hold of one at a reasonable price. Um, so yeah, saw this one and decided to grab it. Um, and another new brand, well, it's not exactly a puzzle brand. I think it's more one of these like book publishing or a publisher brand. Um, the brand's called, oh, the publisher's called uh, Leo Paper Products and the artwork's by EVO Studio. So I haven't heard of them before, but um, when I saw this, it really caught my eye. Um, so it's called, it's 1000 pieces and it's called Seeing Stars. And it's basically a sort of like collection of all the sort of images of like the different zodiacs or horoscope um, signs and I guess they're sort of like ast astrological symbols in the sky um, but yeah I just really like the colors and um, I'm not really into astrology or that sort of thing but I mean the artwork is just really nice and so you know I can definitely appreciate good artwork but the other thing I like about the artwork is that it's a very to me a very 70s style including the font of seeing stars um, yeah it just has a real 70s vibe or 60s vibe like sort of like um, Beatles yellow submarine that kind of like illustration style it reminds me of that um, yeah so very colorful and a bit like kind of abstract and very interesting but yeah so this one looks like it should be a lot of fun to put together and I have no idea what the quality of this one or the better co one is like but I'm hoping it's good so fingers crossed yeah so then I went a little crazy trolling Amazon late at night one time or many times as one does when you can't sleep and um, I saw a whole bunch of Ravensburger at a very discounted price like half price or more than half price so the next few are ones where I'd sort of seen them around but they weren't exactly on my wish list or a couple one was but they were ones that I sort of admired but I didn't really think I was going to get them especially not at full price but then you know when they were like half price that was a whole different story so anyway the next few are by the same artist called um, Anne Searle and I think she's a UK artist because it says it's all designed and everything in the UK designed and developed in the UK anyway this one's called Marvelous Moths and I'm pretty sure they just named it this because otherwise who would buy a puzzle with moths but that being said they're very fancy looking moths um, much fancier than any Australian moss. Aussie moss tend to just be really brown and mundane and boring. So these are very fancy in comparison. Um, but yeah, anyway, the art style is really lovely. Like it's very beautiful. Um, it's, I guess, a realistic sort of, um, yeah, like anatomically correct or something you'd find in like a reference book of like insects or plants, that sort of thing. So it's very like realistic style, but still an illustration um, but yeah it almost basically the puzzles made up of all these little I guess what they look like little reference cards um, featuring like each moth and sort of like has like a plant that they're on which I guess is the plant that you would like the location that you'd find them or the plants that they're attracted to so I guess um, yeah so it looks like it has a bit of information on each card about the name and like what else what does it say um oh, okay yeah just the name of the moth and the name of the plant yeah so little reference cards so yeah I just thought that was really pretty um like I said like I don't absolutely love this like it wasn't on my wish list but I really I do really like it um so I think it's a sort of puzzle that I'd enjoy doing a couple times but then maybe after that it may not stay in my collection, I might pass it on or donate it, sell it, something like that. Um, but you know, I think it'll be good fun to do in the meantime. Um, so next we have another one from the same artist and I guess the same series. This one's called Butterfly Splendor. And again, it's like the same style as the moth puzzle. Um, got all these lovely butterflies, which I believe are probably UK or European 
just based on that this seems to be sort of a UK produced puzzle and we definitely don't really have these butterflies in Australia. Um, but yeah, again, this sort of realistic reference book style on little reference cards with information about each one. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. So even though like they're sort of this realistic style, they're still quite colorful. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, and I think this must also be from the same series and same artist. This one's called Wondrous Trees. And again, pretty much the same style as the other two, um, but it sort of focuses more on the tree types. And then it's got little, includes like little birds and animals, I guess that would, you know, you might find living or visiting these trees. So yeah, it's a very lovely one. Um, very nice bird illustrations. And, a little squirrel and yeah it just looks really very peaceful and pretty so I think that's going to be a nice one to do as well um, and then we have another one which I guess is a different series this one's called the gardener's palette and it says number one the cottage garden so I'm guessing there's going to be there's more than one in this cottage garden series um, this one was definitely on my wish list and you can probably see why um, it's also by the same artist, Ansel, but yes, it's a rainbow gradient. Um, so yes, of course, it was on my wish list. But it's not just any rainbow gradient. It's got each column of colors is made up of like different flowers or plants. And I think, it, yeah, it actually says next to each one what they are. So it's pretty cool, informative. Um, yeah, so I just thought that's a very pretty take on like your rainbow gradient. I'm not... I don't think it'll be too hard to do. I think it'll be pretty easy, but I think it will just look really nice when it's finished and I can see myself doing this a few times. So again, it might not stay in my collection forever, but I think it'll just be a fun and beautiful puzzle to do. So yeah. And then moving on to a couple more Ravensburger that were absolutely on my wish list. Um, one in particular that I'd been watching for ages and couldn't get a hold of was this one which is called the Christmas Library and it's by Amy Stewart this one I've been eyeing off for like a really long time and um, yeah I think it's fairly old 2017 but it finally became available on Amazon so I jumped at the chance to get it um, but yeah it's I guess part of her shelf like shelf book series like I've got a few others like the vintage cookbooks and the vintage library and oh like vintage travel guides um although all those are only 500 piece whereas this is 1000 piece but yeah i just thought this was really pretty really beautiful it basically features all these sort of like beautifully illustrated and drawn um like vintage christmas book covers and also like she's included lots of little um extra like i guess knickknacks like we've got a nutcracker doll and like a Christmas bauble, the star from the top of the tree, like a little dancing figurine, a snowman, like really cute vintage style Christmas ornaments and decorations. Um, I don't normally go for a lot of like Christmassy holiday puzzles, often because I just find them a bit like cheesy or tacky, uh, like a bit too silly, or just not in my sort of illustration style, I guess. Um, like. Usually Christmas ones have Santas running around and it's not really my thing, but this I feel like has just been illustrated so beautifully and like I love her other puzzles, especially from this series. So yeah, I really see myself enjoying this one, especially for Christmas this year. So yeah, definitely looking forward to doing that one. And then last of the Amazon haul. Now wait for it, you're gonna be shocked. Um, this is my very first Disney puzzle. Yes, that's right. I don't own any Disney puzzles except this one. So this one is called um, Art Nouveau Princesses. And yeah, the reason why this one caught my eye was because well, it's got your Disney princesses, but all of their backgrounds are basically done in that sort of like, I think it's pronounced Alphonse Mucha, the artist um, who's very famous for those like Art Nouveau posters of beautifully decorated and detailed background with like, a lady in robes that sort of thing so they're all done in that style and a bit like that Westy Knight puzzle where it's done in the Van Gogh style I really like um, quite like it when artists will sort of be inspired by 
another artist or art style and like especially a famous one and sort of um, incorporated in their own art style like I find that quite fun and a bit cheeky and just cool so I really like that they did it for this so that's kind of why this is a bit of an exception like I do like Disney but something about like Disney and often a lot of cartoons and stuff and brands that I don't really like in a puzzle format like I still enjoy watching Disney but I don't really want to puzzle it but this really is the exception because I just thought it looked really cool and really pretty um, and really like the details so yeah I'm excited to do this one and now I can't be hassled anymore for not having Disney in my collection so that's pretty cool so yeah excited to do this one as well um, so that's it from the Amazon haul it's quite a lot um, up next we've got um, a few more um, puzzle brand or puzzle companies I guess or companies where I got puzzles from to go through um, I think we've got like four more but a, whole, a lot more than four more puzzles let's just say that so yeah so in a minute I'll show you a few other things I got and um, yeah so that should be fun so I've got a couple more groups of puzzles here um, I guess both from online everything's pretty much from online these days um, so the first one is from a company called recess and I found them on Instagram as I do for a lot of puzzle companies um, they're based, based in the US and um, they seem to stock puzzles that are done by different artists so um, they'll have like artists do like a, a small series or collection so this first one I believe is just these two puzzles um, from the artist Tim Doyle and I'd sort of seen these around before like you can buy them in other places not just on their website but I did actually order it from the US so shipping was actually it all end up being not too much so this one's called Amanda Hug and Kiss um, or oh, Unreal Estate Amanda Hug and Kiss and these two they're Simpsons inspired so they're sort of like almost like a more realistic dark kind of version of the Simpsons like they're like sort of pictured at night or at dusk yeah and this one's like kind of features the lonely sax player outside Moe's Tavern and you can sort of see like the giant I can't remember what it's called but like the giant donut boy in the background and this sort of gradient purpley bluey dusk kind of sky um, but yeah I don't know I just like it I mean if this was like well I guess I do have a normal Simpsons puzzle but generally I wouldn't probably buy like a regular Simpsons puzzle so but I like this sort of like this take on on it like it was a just more adult more interesting a bit quirky um, and yeah the same goes for this one also by the same artist um, this one's called oh yeah Unreal Estate Night Falls on the um, SNPP which is Springfield Nuclear Power Plant um, yeah and it's like I guess night time or dusk again some car parked outside the quickie mart and then you can see the I guess the nuclear sort of power plant towers in the background um, yeah it sort of has this like dark bit of a dark feel to them but yeah I really like the colors and that sort of very I guess they're quite comic book style um, but yeah they just I just thought they were really cool I really like them so yeah I'm interested I don't know what the quality is like so I'm interested to see that as well but yeah they're, they're really cool I thought um, and then I got two more from recess but these are by a different artist so this artist is called Casey Weldon and okay like when I saw this I had to get it um, so this one is called Catbird Seat and it's just one of the strangest puzzles I've ever seen but I really love it like basically it's this again sort of looks like a night time or dusk scene it's these like two giant tabby cats and like basically sitting amongst like this field of strange neon glowing flamingos like it's just the weirdest scene I have no explanation for this but I really like it I love like this these fluoro this sort of fluoro pink translucent um, flamingos and I mean I love cats and it's just truly bizarre very surreal um, but yeah I really like it it's never seen anything like this so yeah I really hope the quality is good in these because I'm really digging this artwork so and then another by the same artist um, again I guess it's sort of 
part of the same series. This one's called um, The Bird Brain and also quite dark. Um, yeah, basically features a skeleton and it's got a brain, it's got its sort of brain exposed and the brain is just all made up of, again, of these like neon pink fluorescent flamingos and it's holding one on its hand and just sort of dark leaves in the background. So yeah, kind of weird, kind of surreal, a bit spooky. I mean, these would be actually pretty good for Halloween. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really like them. They're just so different and quite unusual. I mean, I might have to look up more by this artist, see if I can get any cool posters or something. But yeah, I love that they're puzzles. Like, it's awesome. It just looks like, I mean, I th yeah, I don't know how easy. I think a lot of this puzzle will probably be easy to do, but then some of the backgrounds are quite dark, although I guess like the other, the Simpsons ones and even the catbird seat, they have kind of a gradient background. So it might just be this one with the sort of dark leaves. Might be a bit tricky, but yeah, they look really fun. Um, they're all 1000 piece, by the way. I don't know if I said that. So yeah, so that's it from Recess. Um, and then another group, a collection of puzzles I got um, is from the Australian brand One But Many. Um, so I got... So they just released um, a new collection. They've got two collections already, but this third one they just released recently called Home. Um, and all their collections kind of like feature Aussie or Australian artists and creatives. Um, so I actually just did a video sort of like a sort of kind of review or just showcasing this new collection. Um, so I'll pop it in the cards up here if you're curious to check that out. Um, but yeah, um, so this new collection's by all the artworks by this Australian artist called Alistair Chu. And yeah, she just does, does this really like sort of fun, colorful artwork. Um, this first one's called, I believe it's called The Burbs and it's 1000 piece. Um, yeah, and it's basically like super colorful, but it kind of like uh, features like, I guess sort of the suburbs or a bit of a rural country town setting of like some part of us. They're all like Australian inspired. Um, yeah, like this one has, I mentioned in the video, but it's got the Country Women's Association, which is like a real fixture in sort of small country towns around Australia. So, yeah, I guess it's sort of just somewhere that's a bit a bit out of the city. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy the colours and her sort of like whimsical like artwork. It's really cool. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to doing that one. Very, very pretty. Um, this one as well is very pretty and this one's called Port Ferry, which is actually named after a place in Victoria, Australia. Um, but yeah, again, the colors and the style is very pretty. And I feel like this one looks quite different because of the line work on it. But um, yeah, but for the, for the rest of it, I guess it's quite similar. Um, but yeah, just like sort of the bold, it's got a lot of bold outlines and just really nice, chunky, colorful bits. And yeah, I just really like it. So that one should be fun to do as well. Um, yeah, hmm. and then this one I actually did in the video. This one's called Grand's Window, and I really enjoyed doing this one. Um, yeah, it's got that sort of line work as well that the Port Ferry one has. Um, but yeah, I really liked the colors, and this one was sort of more of a pastel, I guess, color palette than the others. Um, but yeah, very sort of tranquil setting. Like it's uh, the idea is that you're looking through your grandma's window, and she's got a a house in the country in Australia and so yeah but when I look at this I like can almost hear this it's very nostalgic I can actually hear like the sounds of the magpie birds and that sort of like country because my parents live in the country so it's like makes me think of waking up at their place in the country um, yeah so very nostalgic as an Aussie but yeah definitely another beautiful puzzle so I've done it once for the video but I I'm planning to do it again actually like I Really enjoyed it. And also, um, I have to say, like, for these one but many ones, and probably the recess ones, actually, they're the sort of puzzles that I think would probably stay in my collection, like, forever. Or at least, I don't know about, depending on the quality of the recess ones, if they're good quality, I think they're interesting and different and unusual enough that I could see myself holding onto those for a long time. And yeah, definitely the one but many ones, I really love the quality. Um, and the artwork style of all the different collections. So they're, they're not going anywhere. And then the last one from that one, but many, the collection is called Sneaky Goals. Um, 
being like sneaky seagulls because it's a beach setting but it's actually got these like seagulls a very Aussie thing maybe it happens overseas too where if you, you're at the beach and you've just bought your fish and chips or some nice hot chips from like the canteen on the beach and then out of nowhere like sneaky seagulls swoop down and they'll steal chips out of your hand they're very brazen um, you know we have a few brazen wildlife in Australia that steal your food um, yeah so I yeah I like that it's like this one looks really colorful and fun um, yeah just a really like lively beach scene so yeah also by the same artist Alice Chu uh, so this one looks like yeah I think it'll be a really fun one to do it has a lot of details packed in there and I mean appeals to me because of the sneaky goals as well stealing chips so it's pretty fun and it's a dog playing frisbee so yeah I think like the rest of these that I haven't done will be like quite fun to do yeah so really glad I got those um, yeah and excited to try the recess ones um, so that's it from those two um, I've just got a few more puzzles from a couple more companies um, so yeah we'll go through those quick and then we'll be done so we've just got a handful of puzzles left from this giant hall um, so the next place that I got some puzzles from is an Australian website called I think it's the Nile.com.au like the Niles in Egypt um, I don't know why it's called that and they have like they don't just have puzzles they have like a lot of books and maybe I think like kids toys and but like they sort of have mostly like books and stuff like that but um yeah they have a fair selection of puzzles too but yeah they just ship Australia wide and uh, sometimes have things at a good price um or a kind of interesting selection of stuff so anyway this first one is from another brand I've never tried before called Crocodile Creek and they seem to do puzzles that are aimed more at kids but I mean hey if, if it's a design I like I'm gonna get it I don't care if it's for kids or not so this one's 500 piece and it's called Birds of Paradise um, and I just really I don't know I really like the colors very well, it matches my hair pinks and purples um, but yeah it's just a bunch of like birds of paradise and butterflies and sort of like a bunch of colorful birds and butterflies and plants and stuff um, but yeah it just looks really fun I like the sort of style, sort of yeah cartoony stylized artwork um, I've seen this Crocodile Creek brand around like quite a few places but I've never tried them, them before um, they're pretty inexpensive too actually so yeah definitely interested to see what the quality's like because there's a, you know they've got a few other things that have sort of caught my eye but thought I'd start with this one um, but yeah very I, this one's definitely the favorite my favorite one that I've seen just because of the colors and artwork but yeah very pretty so looking forward to trying that um, <laughs> then the next one I it's very uh, something that was a big part of my childhood and is very nostalgic to me I had to get this Care Bears puzzle I saw quite a few people with it on Instagram and I was like oh, where did they get it from I need it um, so this is from the brand Aquarius which they do I think they're a US brand and I've got a few of their puzzles they tend to do quite fun sort of pop culture weird wonderful puzzles um, their quality is like okay like it's not the highest quality ever but um, yeah their puzzles aren't too expensive or anything and you know and also when it's a Care Bears puzzle I kind of have to get it so there's that but yeah just a nice classic scene of Care Bears sort of very 80s style illustration which is what I grew up with um, yeah just a little 500 piece one so I think that'll be fun to do um, yeah really takes me back to like the cartoons and and oh if I see ever see a strawberry shortcake one like that's a, like, purchasing that one straight away um, yeah so this will be fun and then this is um, another one from this company that I can't pronounce Dieco Dieco I think that's it which is actually a French company um, so I think I showed in last month's haul I had a 500 piece unicorn garden one like a sort of brownie one but um, yeah I saw another one from them um, which is a thousand piece and it's called what's it called magic India um, and it's just I really like the colors like I just unfortunately the box doesn't sh like it has a mini picture on the back of the whole thing which is a bit hard to see but yeah it just looks like it's got like elephants and peacocks and cows and lots of different people but 
just the colors and illustration style really appealed like it just looks really lively and vibrant and fun and just very beautiful so yeah again i i mean i probably should have done the 500 piece one and figured out what the quality is like before committing to another one but it's so pretty i like couldn't resist it <laughs> and it was like quite inexpensive too especially like i'm hoping it's good quality because the box is very like sturdy and feels really nice i mean so it gives me hope that the pieces inside will be nice as well because it feels pretty heavy so they seem like they're chunky pieces but yeah also why, why this box shape it's kind of really annoying especially to store i guess if you've got a few of them you could like stack them or something but it doesn't really fit with all the other puzzle boxes but well, i guess it stands out but anyway looking forward to this one um and then i actually got a ravensburger one which i've been looking for for a while okay don't judge me i know it's only 100 pieces this is i think this is like the smallest jigsaw puzzle i own pretty much um, but basically it's called underwater wonders and the reason why i got it is i wouldn't normally go out of my way looking for such a small piece count puzzle but it's by the artist what's her name demelsa horton and she's been putting out quite a few beautiful puzzles through Ravensburger. Uh, normally all the other ones are like 1000 or 2000 piece count um, but her uh, like they're all this style and they're sort of like these weird little 3d fun characters like this is sort of an underwater scene and it's got like an octopus holding ice creams with its tentacles riding a bicycle and poor penguin behind it's copped an ice cream to the face and yeah it's just a cute little underwater scene of fun little characters doing weird and wonderful things so a bit quirky but yeah so i was just like i really like the other puzzles of hers so i was like why not i'll grab this one if i see it at a reasonable price and i did so yeah but i guess this will just be a little a quick fun puzzle to whip together in like 10 minutes or something so maybe a bit longer i don't know but yeah looking forward to that one and then I didn't expect to find Cobble Hill on this website, but um, yeah, I did. And I saw this one, which I'd sort of been eyeing up for a while at quite a good price. Um, oh, what's it called? Okay, it's called, okay, I can't say French things, but Jardinier and then a gardener's calendar. So it's basically like the months of the year and each month picture is like a, a I guess a different, yeah different image garden image and it's like I guess it sort of corresponds to a European or French um, calendar because like February is like pretty much dead trees because it's the middle of winter um, but yeah I really like the art style again it's sort of this very arts and crafts art nouveau style um, and it's got in between even in between each like month there's a beautiful intricate patterns and designs like it's very very detailed um so yeah i sort of been eyeing this one for a while and just think it's really pretty um first i thought like will it be that hard to do because often like when you have like puzzles that have these sections it's almost like doing little mini puzzles and i suppose it will be but then at the same time there's so many little trees and plants and details that i think it might still actually be quite tricky to do this one so we'll have to see but yeah, so really pretty. Glad I've added that to my Cobble Hill collection. I have quite a few now, um, and I really like the quality and the artwork that's available. So yeah, that's a nice one to add. Okay, so that's all from the Nile.com.au. And then the next one is actually a puzzle I won um, from like an Instagram competition. Um, and it's from a company in Australia called The Melbourne Map. Um, I'll link them down below. Yeah, so basically they only have one puzzle and they don't just do the puzzle. They have like, they basically have created this Melbourne map. Melbourne's like in Australia, this Melbourne map artwork. And so you can buy it as like, I think posters and things, but they've also got this 1000 piece puzzle of that image. Um, so yeah, they were a sponsor for this competition I entered and I won. So very happy about that. Um, yeah, and I'd sort of seen them around on Instagram before and, yeah, I just thought, like, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, they. I think from what I read, they, like, were in, 
they created this, like they illustrated this map with like all sorts of quirky things, like has a lot of modern Melbourne buildings, but they also like were inspired by a lot of like really old photographs in Melbourne as well to, I guess, get the layout and things like that. So yeah, so very interesting. It has like a lot of fun details. Like I think they even have a whole list on the back here, like landmarks and points of interest. So you've got a landmarks and then it also has a, can you find? So, so the landmarks are pretty ordinary. So they're like, you know, where's Luna Park and the, where's the convention center and certain theaters and the parliament house and stuff in Melbourne. So like pretty ordinary things. But then in the, can you find, um, can you find like a cat and a carrot man and a duck and Elvis, not Presley, um, and six penguins and <laughs> all sorts of fun, weird things that are in here. It's really detailed. Um, I think this is like, I don't know how I'm going to find all those details. Like it, it's, it, I think this is going to be a really difficult map to do um, or puzzle to do. Like it's really intricate, very detailed, but I think it'll still be fun, like fun putting it together and then discovering all these tiny little quirky details. Um, yeah, so definitely haven't, well, I've done a few map puzzles, but they're usually like map of the world, like a globe or something like that, not like a, such a sort of zoomed in map or like a map of a particular place. So definitely interested to try this one and um, see what the quality is like. Um, I don't know if they will ever make any other maps apart from the Melbourne map because that's just what the company's called. But um, yeah, but this one's pretty cool. So glad I won that. Um, yeah, and interested to try it. So looking forward to that one as well. So yeah, that's, I believe that's everything from this month's puzzle haul. Um, quite a lot of stuff, but I feel like, um, I mean, apart from like the ton of Ravensburgers that I got, I still picked up quite a few like interesting and different pieces that, you know, and a lot of brands I haven't tried before. So yeah, definitely gonna have fun with all the things I grabbed in this haul. Um, yeah, I guess keep an eye out for next month's haul. Um, I always say the next month's like, oh, it won't be this big, but then somehow, I don't know, we end up here with like a million puzzles. So we'll see what happens next month, but um, yeah. So in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this October puzzle haul. There were quite a lot of puzzles and I guess let me know if there's any that are on your wish list or that you've had your eye on, um, any that you already have and let me know what you think of them. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.